when it comes to innovation, the next speaker, Dr. Nariman Favardin, president of Stevens Institute of Technology, he is the seventh president in 145 years. Just think about that. He's the seventh president. Not a lot of turnover. But I know Nariman. I know he is an internationally known re re researcher, holds seven U.S. patents. He is a fellow of IEEE. And he is an entrepreneur. He started a number of companies. I'm quite sure he'll share his background, how, how technology has shaped his life, and how he is now shaping MSMEs in terms of tech transfer, in terms of the impact in society. Nariman? Can you hear me all right? Yes? yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Sargent. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the United Nations, the permanent mission of Argentina to the UN, and the International Council for Small Business for this invitation to participate in the summit today. Uh, as president of Stevens Institute of Technology, a university that was established actually 147 years ago, largely because of the entrepreneurial success of its founders, I appreciate the essential role that uh, MSMEs, and particularly entrepreneurship, plays in improving the lives and welfare of individuals, providing benefits to society, creating jobs, and growing the economy. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I should say that when Dr. Sargent contacted me, asking me to participate in this gathering, uh, my immediate question to him was, uh, what should I speak about? And he said, about eight minutes. <laughs> so in the remaining seven and a half minutes that I have, I'll try to focus on three areas. First, my perspectives on the ways in which innovation and entrepreneurship influence economic development. Second, my observations on the barriers that must be overcome in order to unleash technology-enabled entrepreneurship. And third, some examples that can be replicated in many settings to build a country's capacity for entrepreneurship. Uh, also, in the interest of full disclosure, I should say that my wife, uh, has been working for the World Bank for nearly three decades. And as a result, I hear a lot about um, all kinds of research and activities that the bank is involved with, and I have access to a lot of uh, interesting statistics. Uh, in fact, the World Bank estimates that 600 million jobs will be needed in the next 15 years to absorb the growing global workforce. Formal MSMEs are anticipated to contribute up to 45% of the total employment and up to 33% of national income in emerging economies. And they account for four out of five new jobs in emerging markets. Their role is very, very significant. However, when I look at these statistics, it strikes me that these numbers cannot be achieved without MSMEs that can innovate. Innovation in its various forms is reported to account for somewhere between 50 and 85 percent of economic growth, depending on the country, the level of economic development, and the phase of the economic cycle. Innovation often spawns entrepreneurship, and technology innovation of the sort that our generation has experienced, especially in recent years, has created widespread dis disruption to whole industries and financial markets. Consider, just for example, companies like Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Uber. So, what are some of the barriers to growing more entrepreneurs and supporting MSMEs? Of course, these barriers vary depending on the country and on the culture. I'd be brief because this audience is quite knowledgeable in the subject matter. The first is the educational barrier, leading to the skills gap that prevents many from succeeding in a knowledge-based economy and navigating in a technology-rich environment. The second is the inadequacy of the entrepreneurial ecosystem in some countries. By this, I mean the policies and regulations 
access to capital, and the basic infrastructure and utilities necessary to start and grow businesses. This might be lack of electricity in some parts of the globe, or lack of access to cloud computing in some other parts of the globe. The third barrier is inadequate support, both public and private, for research and development. Research translates into innovation, which generates new businesses. Finally, I should mention the cultural barrier that stems from aversion to risk-taking and fear of failure. Now, I'd like to share with you a few replicable examples of how we promote and support entrepreneurship at Stevens Institute of Technology. As a technology-focused university, we are educating generation after generation of innovators and entrepreneurs, many of whom started micro or small enterprises, which then flourished to multi-million dollar international companies that employ hundreds and sometimes thousands of employees. We've distilled many of the lessons learned to create an entrepreneurship ecosystem that consists of a number of elements, and I'd like to highlight a few of them for you. First, we have a required freshman course on entrepreneurial thinking, giving students their first experience with creating a business and transforming it into a viable venture. This is followed by an eight-semester design spine that infuses entrepreneurship into required design courses. Second, a required senior design capstone course that often leads students to file for patents and then launch new businesses. Third, we offer a minor in entrepreneurship to all of our students, regardless of their major, as well as a required course in entrepreneurship for all of our PhD students. Fourth, the Stevens Venture Center, a host site that provides budding entrepreneurs support and expertise such as legal, financial, and marketing to develop and prototype their ideas and grow their businesses. At this moment, we have 11 student-founded companies in our venture center. And finally, a regular lecture series by visiting entrepreneurs who share lessons learned from their entrepreneurial failures and successes. Let me wrap up by sharing with you an experience that I'm particularly proud of. Recognizing the value of entrepreneurship to a healthy and independent, interdependent global economy, we have engaged in international partnerships, mostly through ministries of education of several countries, to build the infrastructure for entrepreneurship and increase the pipeline of new entrepreneurs. In Malaysia, for example, Stevens conducted Train the Trainer program for faculty at 23 universities throughout the country to prepare them to teach a required course on entrepreneurship. Our faculty also prepared the Malaysian faculty with curricula and background to offer a four-course minor on entrepreneurship and in one course sequence, which is called the Senior Startup, students actually create their own companies and sell their actual products and services. In closing, entrepreneurship of the type being discussed at this summit in MSMEs is a required and necessary component of a healthy economy at the local, national, and global level. Ensuring the conditions in which entrepreneurs can thrive is incumbent on all of us as educators, policymakers, and those in positions of influence in our own organizations and globally. Thank you, and I wish you much success for the remainder of this summit and at the MSME Day in Buenos Aires.